presented tonight and his board appointments to the health care authority. As I've done in the past, my plan is just to uh, take the names up in order uh, one by one, and uh, I'm just going to share that. Uh, this evening, any discussions as to uh, the board appointments? I, I certainly wish that we could do something to get this procedure changed. Yes. Because, you know, we're voting for one person.
So there is, there is that opportunity. Um, it takes a little more time to do that, but it, that opportunity does exist. And that's the reason that the health care authority has to give you the names of the expired term 60 days. We have to make our list to the appointing authority 60 days prior to the to the expiration of that term. So there is time to, you know, we these things were turned in on Well we have to get sixty days within within the land. Yeah. It, yeah. Well, I mean so they were turned in a long time ago. We've had an opportunity, we could have addressed this earlier and rejected all of them and got another list of, of three if we if we felt like that was needed. So if, if you would, I think it would be helpful if, if you did speak to the board about, about the process since the other appointing authority. It would take a change to the bylaws, I guess, right, Bruce? Who would require an amendment of the uh, article of reincorporation or the certificate of reincorporation. And that Which requires concurrence from this body. It does not require concurrence from the other appointing authorities. Uh, the just hospital the board of the city of Ames and this council would have to agree and then uh, just discuss the board. You know, we'll just I think it'd be helpful to do. I'll be glad to, okay. to carry that forward. Anything else on item one? All right, let's go then to item two. This appears on the consent agenda tonight and it is for a restaurant retail gratification for a crab bear type. Pretty y'all hear okay. Yeah. Very good. Y'all be here for the meeting tonight? Okay. Okay. Any, any discussion to ask to this issue? Again, it's on the consent agenda tonight. No, no, I'm busy tonight. It's heavy. And it's heavy. It's heavy. It's heavy. It's heavy. It's heavy. When, when will the application of this issue start? Um, everything's already been started and turned in. No, no, no. When will this issue start? When will this issue start? Oh, okay. I mean, I think y'all know why, because, you know, I've been down there, and it's, I just didn't you know the total we get. And I'm not going to give it back to, to the body. I'm, 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 I'm pulling up on my everything. I wanted everybody here to understand that, you know, one, once upon a time, it was, it was out there that we were holding up the process, and I don't think the process needed to get started. And I don't know if whoever started that understood the negative publicity that was being given. I received about five calls talking about how sorry we were and what we needed to do with this that was the I sincerely apologize for that. I am the new management. Okay. So the previous management didn't work out. Gotcha. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. Anything further on item two? Again, that's the same thing. Okay, let's go then to the discussion of the garbage debris, debris orders. This folks just handed us uh, a memo from. Bruce, yes, I, I, I don't think I just wanted to put this on the agenda just to remind that we continue to have this conversation with the council of public. So this is just something that Bruce brought together, brought together. And I know some of you council person had the opportunity to be at the uh, and Tuscaloosa and has some other things. Here. So it's other things that we're still trying to get a something that everybody is good with before we bring it back. But I just want to share that with you all today. And then whenever the council is ready to bring it back for discussion and possibility of the changes that they want to do with the ordinance, we can do it at that time. But I just want to share that with you. No, I, I appreciate that. And I, mean, I think we all know just based on, you know, comments and questions we got from the public and then the, then the, uh, uh, the, the work that you have with the public and 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 the public and
Helena, who is, uh, has a little bit like 2,000 um, residents uh, smaller than us, but you know they have an additional fee on their water payment where what is used for like household items and, and, and the roof pickup and things like that. So I think we gained a lot of insight of how other cities, um, you know, how their policies stay, you know, in regards to the garbage collection. And you know, I'm ready to move forward. I, you know, my my assessment would be to <coughs> go back to picking up, you know, household items and trash and add an additional uh, because the conversation started because of our financial issues because of it and add a, a fee to the water water bill. I don't know what the how that would work with the water company. I don't know if you've talked to Turner about that quite yet, but I think that that would be a compromise between our financial issues as well as you know with the community. So I don't know if Bruce or you talk to him. I we've had conversations about it already and we had lunch last Thursday a lot of things. So we're working together because some things we bring lines but which is also addressing it. Yeah. And I know a lot of people said, well just add to the garbage thing and that we already pay. Well I mean we're like what how much money behind and people just not paying their garbage fees. So it's it's almost unenforceable. I don't know how that would be moving forward with, with uh the public that we contract with and, and enforcing garbage uh garbage fees. So a lot of people don't pay them. So it's like how do you enforce those things um on our end? That's addressing it as well and then uh, look it, there is a way there's already a place in, in place right now that one company uses and the city of Anson uses it well, but this information that we have to more about to make it. There is a way that we can actually uh, get those things back, and we just have to start with those as well. I would I agree that we're going to have to do something, uh, whether it's raising the garbage fee or, or attacking on the water bill, or whatever it is that we've got to do to adjust this to get it done. But uh, I talked to David uh, yesterday back about the idea of creating uh, some kind of tiered payment system based off of income thresholds. We've got right now a bunch of folks that don't pay anything for garbage because of their income. Uh, but could they could we create something that had a five and a ten and a fifteen or something like that so that everybody has some ownership in this problem? I think that when you take the ownership away from them by saying it doesn't cost you anything, there's no ownership in the problem either at that point. And I think that there needs to be some accountability put on every citizen in the city. Uh, even if it's at a, at a token number, uh, that everybody has to pay at least something for it. Maybe it's $3 a month, maybe it's $5 a month, maybe it's $8 a month when somebody else is paying 12 or somebody else at a different income level. And I don't know what those income level thresholds might be, but it might be an opportunity to get full engagement from all our citizenry and thereby full ownership of the problem, which seems to be what's really lacking right now. It's hard for me to say Let's raise the fees and put it on the water bill and, and, and hit folks that, because the ones that we're hearing from, people we're all getting calls from, are the people that are doing the right thing. The guy that's dumping the trash in their front yard at night while they're asleep is not going to do the right thing. Uh, and maybe he's never going to do the right thing, but if he had some ownership in the problem too, then I, I just feel like maybe we get a better response citywide at that point. Uh, and I think it would help yield a, a more positive revenue stream for it all as well. Uh, the other thing that I wonder about is whether or not we could take, whether it's legal to take some of this Recovery Act funds and things like that to fund the equipment purchases for, you know, I, I think if we're going to go back to doing this, we got to add a third crew, right? we got two crews right now picking up rush. Uh, if we can we can go back to what we're doing it, and then the phone call's going to change. You still need to call, but they're going to say, why aren't you picking up my leaves, or nobody's down my street in a month, because
because they're going to dump the trash on the street again, and now we can't keep up with that problem. So you've got to have, if you're going to do it, let's do it, let's do it right, let's get a third crew in there, but that takes equipment to do it, and that's, that's a big front-end cost there. Now there's a maintenance cost and a replacement cost ultimately too, but, but the initial investment is significant there. And then again, finding the manpower to do it too is, a, is another issue. But, but looking at it from that perspective of can we find funds to buy the necessary equipment to, to equip a third crew? Uh, can we find the manpower to run a third crew? And then where can we find the funding to pay their salaries, wages, benefits, uh, the diesel fees, and the tipping fees, and all the other pieces that we got to pay, uh, to and the maintenance of the equipment and all of that stuff that we got to pay. You know, what are the what does that structure look like? I'm not sure I I have the knowledge to, to answer those questions, but I know that we can define what kind of equipment costs. I know we can define what a crew would, would run us annually. And I know we've, we've got a good number from history about what our tipping fees are. Those, those numbers are there. I just don't have them in front of me, but those are there. And then we can sit down and figure out what we're collecting. We know what we're collecting. We know what we're gonna have to collect in order to make it break even, or at least come close to breaking even. We're managing it not coming even, breaking even now, but it would be nice if we got close to breaking even. I mean, uh, if we could get it to break even, then we might have some extra dollars to pave some roads, to do some other things that that our citizens would like to see done as well. But if we're going to take additional monies to picking up mattresses and furniture, well, those potholes are going to get bigger. I mean, it, we don't have a money tree out back. And it's not that we're broke, but because I don't, we're not, we're doing well as a city, but you can't keep perpetuating. That was the logic that got us to the decision to do this. I don't want us to lose sight of that in this process, but there is got to be a structure there, a financial structure that can fund the upfront piece, pay for the pieces going forward, and how we do that with the, with the rate change, whatever it is, uh, is, I'm fully supportive of, but, but I'm as tired as everybody else to get the fuck up. Let and I know the citizens are tired of it. Let me put it up. Everybody's at the same place. Now, when, when you go to a meeting and you hear people pay $28 flat for garbage, you're like, God dang it, that's more than twice what we're paying. Now, here's what I propose I do propose this having something to the water fee. But, with a caveat, we currently have certain people that are not paying the garbage fees. What I'm, what I'm proposing, what I would make a motion for, submit as my recommendation is whatever we add to this, pick this, this to the water fee, water bill, be non exempt. You cannot be exempt from this. And here's why I get it, I understand it. We have certain people that are on. God bless them. I, I, I hope they had a great time and I wish them well throughout the rest of everybody's days. But they're still living in the city. And some of these people are part of the problem. Because some of these people are getting their sons, grandsons, nephews, or paying somebody to come take this stuff and put it out on the street. So if we make that, I keep the trash, what we have now where well the pressure is. We look at that, whatever that limit is to make an exemplary pay that current twelve dollars that we have, we that much pay. But anything that because see now we're trying to clean up the city, right? Now we're trying to clean up the city. Well I keep my numbers. In order to get a crew on an average, let's say what we had once at five man crew, you're looking at on, on average right at on median, you're about one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in just salaries alone. Then by the time we had two hundred to three hundred thousand dollars in equipment, you're looking at close to five hundred that's adding the end of the bit of the and all that. That's not counting the maintenance and make up and all that. So, but that's one, one once a year, five hundred well, a one time startup of five hundred thousand dollars if we had to add another crew. <coughs> an annual of one fifty a year. You're right, the power's gonna 
we're getting ready to talk. But we have to put something there where, as you said, everybody that has a household that pays the water bill, if you don't pay that, that goes on water bill. If they get cut off because you refuse to pay it, well, I'm sorry. I mean, what, at some point, we are absent. We are not, there's no citizen above anyone else in this city. We should all live in each other's equal parts. If it's 22,000, it takes 22,000 equal parts to be happy. And be it 40, this is 4,500,000, if we get 8,000, even if we get $8 for the water in, that would only bring us up to $20, which is still well below what a lot of people are paying. But I'm just saying, whatever we add, we make it where it can be exempt. Regardless of income, age. I mean, expiration date is what it's in. I like the, the tier plan. I think that's, you know, because I mean, a lot of people are on this income, and that varies. Um, the, the reality of all this is we're not going to make everybody happy. I mean, it is what it is, and we can't continue to make individualized concepts for each one person in this city. We have to think about the majority as a whole. And so I think in moving forward, there's a collective idea that yes, we have to get back to a point where we're doing this, but we have to create another idea on how we're going to do this effectively. And so I just think that's where we're at at this point. So, I mean, maybe we can do some research on that and how that would be constructed and, and figure out how we would use the money to even get a new, um, you know, machinery, how that would work. I think maybe we should just go ahead and look into that. So that let me say this to someone to, you know, to what everybody says. It's very explicit in the state and the city ordinance who's exempt. Such as it's very it's, it's very it's but what is happening? Mandatory. mandatory. Right. So but what is happening? That's why I want you all to read it, but what has happened is the same thing that happened with our, our other ordinance. Is that when we are trying to change it and not abide by it, that's that, that's what it is. It's already states who did. But when people come and say, well, so-and-so said we're exempt, this is, that's not what the weather says. We, we, we're, we're talking about, they gave me a lot of, that's not the number for finance. Why? Because we're just not collecting from what we need to collect from. And, 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 and they, the people come and say, because someone said that we've gotten to the point where we've become so passive that we allow that to be the excuse. But that's not what the ordinance said. So everything that is explicit, that's why I need accountable. Once we start holding people accountable, uh, which we've had to do, and, and, and a lot of things, and saying this is we can't keep doing this. That's not what I want to say because no one can ever tell me show me anything right because the right instead says who can be exempt. Well, there's only one exemption. That's it. That that's, 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 that's it. Soul source. That's soul source. Soul source. Soul source. Soul source. Soul source. That's that's all. But so we are uh, almost a million dollars in the ribs from collecting because we are not about that. And I'm enforcing so, Right, so I'm not going to start enforcing this thing, but we got to understand that's what the state says, that's what's mandatory. So all of a sudden when we say it, I'll turn this in because people, people are talking about for it anyway. Uh, and that's what we've got to, but we got to hold people accountable, but that's up to the council when they come to say, all we're doing, because that's all I'm telling the staff, we're abiding by what's the right. That's what we got to do. If we name this up, if we don't name this up, the street department slush run.
we don't have a solution, you know. I mean, so you got to have, you know, whether if the water company would allow us to, to run it back through there, then she'd run it back through there. Well, we do have a way of retrieving that. And I thought, well, there's all, it's already in place because the water company does it. And we have done it for other people where we are talking to the water company. There is a way. And also, if you read it, Bruce doesn't know what that we can come up with. So there's alternatives that we have. But I think one of the key things is if we follow this ordinance to, to the T and there's no exceptions, then I, we won't have that problem. But the exceptions are there. And if anyone has a sole source, and that's all they'll get is Social Security, then it's not. But when we accept the people for word for word of mouth, that's what that's so, Yeah, I'll get that from, but I don't think that's really the biggest part of the problem to get the information back But we're working that out as well. That's what, what, I, would, what I would suggest we do is, is, is ask David if you can define what it would cost to provide equipment for a third degree. And what kind of cost are we looking at in um, salaries and benefits? I do have one comment that just want to make y'all all aware of. Even with the one additional crew, you're talking about at least six months for that one crew to get through the city for trash. That's keeping the schedule we have on brush now. If we use all three of those crews as combination trash, brush like we used to do, your schedule is completely obliterated. You're talking a couple of months ish per house. So just know that that decision is going to to bring up that it's been sitting out here for two months. I guess I just get a little confused. Like even when we were at the Little Kings and Holidays meeting, you know, talking to other cities, they have an exact schedule. You know, even cities as big as ours where it's you know even smaller than ours. They have, you know, hey, we, we do this once a week, or we do this twice a week, or we do this. Like, I'm, I'm just confused on how other cities maintain a schedule, but we don't. I, I don't know how that works. I'm just confused on that. You know, when the citizen are here, are here with the rules, then that's not a problem. But when we change the rules, and we know. That's not realistic, though. You can't say that every other city citizens are adhering to rules and the instant is the only city that's not. That's not what I'm saying. That if everybody, the majority of people, are not adhering to what's in place, that's all I'm saying. Because I don't know what other cities are doing. But no, I, I agree. Yeah, I agree. I'm just saying how. But that, that's, if we say, to a we say, hey, this is what we're doing once a day. If your trash is not out there, well, sorry, you didn't put your trash out there. We'll have to get to it, get to it next week. And we, as council people, just have to be certain and saying, hey, well, you missed that day. You didn't put it out. But the thing about it, we do have a, a, a wonderful trash. But when we add another trash to it, we would have a group of trash. That's what we pay the, 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 the blue truck for. There's a schedule for trash. But when we change it, I know what you're saying, we, but I'm saying other cities have a trash, and then they also have a city that does pick up. I'm just confused on how, in every other city, they have these schedules, but we're saying we can't create one. I'm just confused on that. Man, we do create one. It just, you, you can't tell, you can't determine. I mean, when the truck is full, the truck is full. They've got to drive to the landfill, which is a 30-minute drive out there, 10, 15 minutes to dump the, the truck, and a 30-minute drive back. So you do that three times a day, we just got five hours of work out of that crew instead of eight hours of work out of that crew. Now, next week, they may only have to do it twice. And one week, they may have to do it five times, depending on what's going on. So you can't, you can't predicate, you know, how that's going to happen. But it, we do have, we've always had a schedule. Hey, we're on, we're on the east side this week, we're on the west side this week, we're on the east side this week, we're on the west side this week. That's the way it's always been. We um, have a schedule of, a schedule of that. I don't know what the other cities do. I don't know what, how they do that. I don't know what kind of workforce they have, but I know our workforce does more than one thing in the trash. I think they have a workforce that's dedicated directly to the trash. I don't know. 
But the thing about it, if we make up a schedule, and we've done that before, we've made up a map and tried to follow the map. But if something comes up, and we're taking out of that schedule, I, I, don't, I don't know because these guys, don't, they're not their job not just to pick up trash. If a road goes out or something happens, they have to pull off that and then that schedule falls behind. We've done schedules before, but what it's gotten in, that gets the council beat up because we can't get that schedule because we have to pull off or something else. So I don't know what the other cities, but I just know the only thing I can speak to is it's hard for us to hold the schedule and making sure that we can uh, comply with that schedule. And that's, that's the problem we have. Let me ask you this. We obviously have an inordinate amount of trash and debris on the streets right now because the, we're trying to enforce policy that our citizens are refusing to allow us to enforce. Uh, I mean, that's the short end of it. Um, but if we got caught up, if we got it to a point where it was normal, would three crews, two that work for us, and one that work trash, be adequate to satisfy the needs of our city? Well, that, that, that's, that's an unanswerable question. What we would have to do is clean it up and see what the volume is on a regular basis. Because remember, for the last two and a half years, we've been dealing with COVID and people being at home and cleaning and dumping. So now that we're back to working and people go, I think it would be less, but I can't say that until we got everything cleaned up. So that's an unanswerable question at this point. Hopefully it's not. You said it would take six months. It says six months to get it cleaned up. Get it cleaned up. But, but, that's, but that didn't get it. So it's um, just cycling back through it. But I, I was just trying to kind of figure it in my mind. Grass 
Did they, did they, did they care about and all those not, not damaging it? I don't think it, they're going to mind paying $500 to get that fixed. So I would like to see. So do that in line with recycling. Well, you know, we tried to recycle. We probably wouldn't do it. I mean, the problem is that it was a buy-in. You didn't have enough people subscribing. They have that problem again. It's a good idea. But I think it's been worth it to check into it. Really good.
now the uh, that fund, that conservation fund now, before it was only, I think, maybe $50,000 at one time, it was a max. So it was $50,000, now $500,000. So what we're trying to do is maybe, as we talked about, when we talked about these uh, capital improvement plan, co-order out with one of those. This may be the opportunity that we can actually get that $500,000 to actually kitty what we have, the city has, look at that number and they said nine some thousand dollars the city's on the on the on the stick for. That's not a true estimate. That's just what would it cost to do the code board about to where we're trying to get back. We got partners who said for me that Collins already said they would do something with them. We got that. So we got partners we can make this happen, but with it being five hundred thousand dollars, this is our opportunity maybe to get cold water out to that trail in here and that would have a great economic impact. We do have a, we do always have funds targeted from the from the uh, bond with this view on the capital improvement plan. But I think now is the time to move forward and I think uh, Sarah Byer did her did a homework and she seems to think from her as an analysis we have a seventy five percent chance of getting this right. So and that's so that's why I want to get it for council now so we got a chance to do this. And if we can do that that will be a game changer, especially by downtown. Oh, no doubt. Yeah, we're complimenting that with the Chief Valley Trail and the rest of the trail system in the county, absolutely. If I give that 80% chance. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I hate to write it to the council about that discussion, but again, one of those things that we've got to, if you look at, we have had a permit for parade, processions, and other public assemblies. We've always had that in place. I don't know where it got out of hand to now we're allowing people to close all public streets to traffic for a block bar, for a birthday, for everything. We're actually, I don't know, I can never find another city that say if I want to have my 10 year old birthday party, I want to close off the street. We're closing off street traffic. We're closing off fruit fairs. We used to just close off if the council were doing something, or they had something within the community, or a party within that community, like the uh, Halloween and other things. Down south, when they have it, we close it off for those areas. But we've gotten to the point, and it's getting dangerous because what we do is we drop off uh, barricades in the street and say, Y'all close it off, and we'll pick it up on, on Monday. Do you know how that when we get to those barricades and not hard and everything? So anybody can come and close that street out. We've had a person say, I want to do a party for my, 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 my two year old son. And the next thing you know, it's turned out like you get something on, the, on, the, on Facebook and they give it to me. We get ready to have a block party down on, on this area. And, and, I think we have to get back to where we were before that we only do this, only do that we stop doing these arbitrarily closing streets off for birthday parties and all these other things. Because I don't think it's fair for a citizen to have to go and reroute themselves for a 10 year birthday party and other things that we go like that. I don't know how we got here because it wasn't like that, but that's where we got now. But I want to bring before council before because I don't want anybody calling council here and I can't do my birthday party anymore because they won't let me close off the street. Because if we're leaving those barricades without anybody unmanned, we set ourselves up for a, a, a lot of mistakes. I'm afraid of it. So. I understand exactly what you're saying, but we're not going to Yeah, yeah, I'm talking about. 
and anyway, I'm just gonna let you know that I'm gonna, we're gonna send I'm gonna have Jackson send something out, let people understand, make sure they understand that only for certain like that and, and if they want to use the birthday or something, they can use that in different box or when I can use the So okay, I'm gonna